This video will discuss uniprocessor scheduling methods, so ways that machines with a single processor schedule which process executes at which time. Now the first and simplest of these that we'll discuss is first come first served, also known as simply FCFS, and to do this we will need to have a table that indicates when each process arrives in the system and how much service time it requires. So this is the amount of time it will take in total for the process to run to completion. Now in first come first served we simply execute whichever process arrives first until it finishes and then when it is finished we execute the next process that arrived and that results in a layout of processes on the grid like so. So in this grid time goes from left to right these are the system times and because process A arrives at time 0 it will run first for 6 units so I will color in these boxes here so these 6 boxes were colored in now while process A was executing process B arrived at time 1 but because we're doing first come first served A has to finish but once A does finish B can start immediately and run for three time steps similarly C arrived at time 3 but had to wait until both A and B had finished but then it can run for seven units of time and D had arrived at time 4 but had to wait until A, B, and C had finished so it could run for its four units of time right here so now all four processes have run to completion, one after the other. Once again, this is the simplest scheduling algorithm. A downside of first come first served is that processes may have to wait a long time before they can even start. We would like to have alternate scheduling algorithms that split the time up evenly across the processes as they come in. This is especially important in multi-user systems where each user is interacting with a system and you want to fairly share the resources across the users and also for individual systems where one person is running multiple programs all of which need to be running simultaneously so one approach that is capable of doing this is round-robin now whenever we think about round-robin scheduling we have to do it with respect to a particular quantum of time so I'm going to use for this first example a quantum Q simply of 1. So what this means is that any given process can run for exactly one unit of time before being kicked off in favor of whichever other processes in the waiting queue currently. So let's see how round robin works with a quantum of 1 for this particular table of processes. A arrives at time 0 and runs for one unit. However, B arrives right here. Now, as soon as process A finishes its one unit, what happens depends a bit on convention. Of course, in a real system with real times instead of these nice, tidy quantums of time, um, you would simply have processes arriving and acting as dictated by real time but for our clean tidy example B is arriving at exactly the moment when A finishes so our convention in this case will be for B to arrive immediately before A gets kicked off the processor and goes back in the queue and so that means that if we have a Q here that B is at the front of the Q while A was running and then A got in line right behind it. So that means that B will get to run next and so B will run for a single unit and at time 2 the only processes in the system are A and B so A gets to run again when B gets kicked off and then here we have C arriving 
And once again, we have to think about how our little convention works. So we had A running sort of on the processor, and B was already in line in the ready queue. Then C arrived, so C got in line behind B. Then A finished its quantum, got kicked off the processor, and went back to the end of this queue. So this is what the queue looks like right before time three. So the actual next processor to run is B. And then here at time four, D shows up. We had B on the processor and C and A were behind it. And while B was still running, D showed up and then B finished its quantum. And so the next process that runs is C. And from this point onward, no new processes are arriving. So we can sort of just maintain this queue order. However, we will have to watch carefully for when the individual processes complete their service time. A is next, then D, then B. And notice at this point that B's service time was three. So B has run for one, two, three units of time and therefore is no longer on the queue. So the next thing after B would be C again, and then A, and then D, C, A, D, C, A, D. And at this point, A has completed one, two, three, four, five, six units of time. That is its service time. D has completed one, two, three, four units. And so they are both done. And so all that is left is for C to run to completion. Now C has completed one, two, three, four units. And sure enough, its service time is seven. It has exactly three units left. And so those will fill in here. So it is possible for a process to run consecutively even if its time quantum would otherwise expire. This can only happen if there are no other waiting processes in the system. So this is an example of round robin with a quantum of one. Now for this next example, I've both changed the time quantum for round robin and I've changed my process table. So notice that the arrival times and the service times are different and this will create some interesting scenarios in this example that I'll show you. So with round robin, once again, A arrives first at time zero and because the quantum is three, it'll get to run for three units. Now process B arrived at time two, so it is already waiting in the queue by the time that A finishes. So we have the queue here, B is in line, A is on the processor, but then it finishes and gets in line behind B. So at this point, B will get to run for three units, and at this point, no new processes have arrived yet, because notice that the arrival times for C and D are quite late in this example. So it's only A and B. So B has finished a quantum of three units, and it is A's turn again, but A has already executed for three of its five units, so it only has a total of two left. So what does that mean? Well, it executes for two units, and then it's done. After executing for those two units, B gets to go again and B will get to go for its full three units. However, notice that process C has not arrived yet. C arrives at time 12, which is, and I'll also note now that D arrives at time 14. So because there are no other processes in the system, but B has reached its time quantum, we have to decide what our convention for dealing with this will be. Now, we could decide that B sort of gets kicked off the processor and then gets back on and has its full quantum. But instead, we will simply say that any process that is on the processor at a time when it is the sole process in the system gets to continue to run until another process shows up. So B has gone past its quantum of three but nothing else is around, so it'll keep running. 
But as soon as C shows up, we're going to kick it off. So D go for another three units. Rather, C will kick it off and take over. And so C will get to go for its up to three units. Now, C's service time happens to only be two. So C will only run for two units here. And then D is arriving right when C is finishing. But B was still in line and was not finished yet because B has only completed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of its eight units. And so B was waiting in line. So B immediately comes back in, finishes its last unit, and then D will get to execute. And D gets its full quantum, which consists of three units. But after those three units, it is the only process in the system. So it simply keeps going to finish the full five. So there's an example of how round robin with a larger quantum can behave a bit unusually, especially if processes are arriving, uh, or rather perhaps not arriving, at the point when a quantum would otherwise be expired. One final note I'd like to point out about these algorithms is that first come first serve is a non-preemptive algorithm. This means that once a process has started running, it is not interrupted, it simply goes to completion. In contrast, round robin is a preemptive algorithm in that running processes can be kicked off the processor mid-execution. We'll see more examples of this in upcoming videos.